So welcome to our innovation and technology transfer discussion about international collaboration. What are the challenges and the opportunities? Very uh, small introduction. The rules of the game nowadays in the virtual room, it works differently than in a real life discussion. So I'd like to mention a couple of things. First of all, the questions for the discussion are based on the feedback of the participants. Uh, during the registration, they were all asked to um, input some questions regarding what they want to discuss in this panel. These questions were processed and we made a um, catalog of questions that were sent to the panelists and each of them was able to review them and decide what they want to contribute and how we'd like to discuss them. However, um, there will be time at the end of the um, guided discussion or moderated discussion for your open questions, just like we had with the SPINA. And me as the moderator, I will take care that the genders, nationalities are well mixed so that not the same person always starts or always finishes the, the discussions. For the panelists, it would be very great if you can keep your camera on. And um, I will address you alternatively with the questions from the, from the document you received before. But if you want to comment something additionally, or, or if you want to, uh, answer any other question uh, spontaneously just raise your hand either like uh, in real life or in the in the virtual world with the raise your hand button and for the participants please keep your microphones muted during the discussion and write down your questions in the chat already while the discussion is going on then we will read them at the end one tip if you want to see um the people the people discussing the panelists use Please, the gallery view, I think it's called like that in German, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's gallery as well. So use the gallery view if you want to see all of the panelists' faces discussing. Otherwise, you can choose the speaker view, and then you can see only the person who is speaking at a time. So having said that, I'd like to introduce you shortly to our participants. Ladies first, uh, first I'd like to welcome Francesca Lasagna. She's the head of innovation at ProChile and she's a G Chilean journalist. She has worked in the economics magazine America Economia and she has a lot of experience in entrepreneurship and she started with her work in Startup Chile in 2011 as part of the founding staff. And she developed her career in very different areas such as community and culture, social impact, marketing and business development among others. And she's currently the leader of the innovation area in ProChile from Chile, so located there because ProChile has offices all over the world. And ProChile, for those of you who might not know, is the Chilean Government Export Promotion Bureau. So welcome, Francesca. Usually there's clapping in a real round table, but I'm doing it Thank alone. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriela. And now I'd like to welcome Elizabeth Zapata. Buenos dias. She's the Director of Technological Development at Corfo. And she is a chemical engineer from the Universidad de Concepción. And also she has a master in technology management from the University of Talca. She started her career in the technological development unit at the UDEC and as a project engineer there. She is professional in the technology development area and she works in innovation policy for over 20 years in both public and private sector. And she's currently the head of the technological development area in the technological capabilities division of Corfo, which is also, for those who might not know it, the Chilean Economic Development Agency. And she's responsible for two of the new programs. Some of them I mentioned yesterday now in our session, the Startup Science and the Technological Innovation Challenge to Public Sector. Additionally, she's a lecturer of innovation policy at the University of Talca. I'd like to uh, now mix it up with the German partners, with the German panelists. Welcome Thomas Neumann. He's the director of the startups and shareholding San Kaite in the IRM from Kaite. And he's been for over eight years the head of the startups and shareholding division at the Associated Kaite Gründerschmiede, which is a project at the encouragement of the entrepreneurial spirit at Kaite. Uh, with his team, he supports and supervises more already more than 120 startup projects alone in the last five years. So, respect. In addition, he's involved in several events as mentor, coach, speaker, and jury member. He's active for various companies as an advisor, 
And he developed international scalable formats with the Founders Alliance Karlsruhe and with the Deep Tech Hub. He's also implementing uh, numerous partners worldwide within the framework of the program Exist Potential from the Ministry of Energy in Germany. And since October 2020, that means one, two months ago, uh, Thomas Neumann has been also co-managing uh, the Kite Innovation GGMBH and coordinates projects such as the Artificial Intelligence Garage, an initiative of the Baden-Württemberg Stiftung. Welcome, Thomas. Uh, another German participant is uh, Christos Klamouris, who is a senior project manager at Axel, and he's the central point of contact and uh, responsible for the Axel Energy Accelerator. He, the Axel was initiated by the nonprofit organization Focused Energy to support early stage, early stage energy startups in creating their business and accelerating their market launch. He's an electrical engineer and also is alumni from KIT from the uh, information technology studies. And he also has management competences in the area of corporate management after studying entrepreneurship at the Ka uh, Karlsruhe Cooperative State University. He's founder of the High Stairs Startup. Up, and he recently gained experience in entrepreneurial thinking, successful team and brand management, and in turning technological innovations into projects. Welcome, Christos. Now going back to Chile, I'd like to welcome Dr. Pablo Catalan. He's the Director of Development and Innovation at the University of Concepcion, and he holds a PhD and Master in Public Policy from the Georgia Institute of Technology, as well as a title in Civil Industrial Engineering from the Universidad de Concepcion. Wow, colleagues with Elizabeth. And he has researched the issues in public policy in the fields of science, technology, and innovation in several countries like Chile, United States, Spain, and Finland. Likewise, he has incurred on several technology surveillance analysis based on bibliometric instruments to determine technological states and also trends. Nowadays, uh, he's the director of the development and innovation uh, department at the University of Concepcion. And now I'd like to welcome also Mr. Tomás Mardones. He's director of the Translational Biotechnology Center of Sofofa, and he's biochemist from the Universidad Católica de Chile and has an MBA uh, from the Universidad Adolfo Ibáñez. He's worked also for over 20 years in the biotechnology field with Chilean and multinational companies covering Chile and Latin American biotechnology markets. He has also taken part in consultancy and academic activities and she's currently the CTO at the Center of Transnational Biotechnology in the Sofofa Hub, and he's actively involved in adoption of biotechnology in the industry and more technological solutions for circular economy, which is uh, one of the hottest topics today for us, including climate challenges. And I think uh, our last participant or panelist from Chile is Pedro Mancilla. He's the executive director in transfer and collaboration at Uslatam. Uslatam is a Chilean company, and he is the director and producer of this company. From his uh, background, he's a director and producer of tele television, specialized in design of inspiring narratives oriented to install a culture of innovation and sustainability aligned with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. He has also 25 years of experience facilitating the technology transfer and sustainable culture bridges in many countries like Germany, Norway, Sweden, and Costa Rica, Chile as well. And he's currently working as a government and senior management advisor in processes of political complexity in strategic industries from the approach of circular economy. Okay, having said that, I'd like to stop sharing my screen and get going with the discussion, which is what everybody is here for. Now, um, in the session from yesterday and our partners, our researchers, they all know ECO. And the topics that we talk about or we work most are circular economy, sustainable production, biomass, green hydrogen, water and energy nexus, underground resources, construction materials in the circular economy. So I'd like to ask uh, some of my panelists to comment on how does the organization foster innovation and technology transfer as joint international collaboration in these topics? I'd like to ask first, um, ladies first as well this time, Elizabeth, can you please comment how your, in, your, your institution or your organization foster these topics? 
Buenos días en Chile and guten Tag in Deutschland. It's a, a couple of words that I remember in German. In relation to your question, uh, currently uh, we don't have open call to foster innovation in this topic, but we have opportunities of cooperation with three projects in Chile that are beginning in, oper in operation. Uh, first is a Circular Economy Technological Center. Uh, the second is the Clean Tech Institute. And the third is um, a Technological Consortium for Electromobility. Uh, the first, the Circular Economy Technological Center is located in north of Chile with a $10 million for 10 years. Their focus are second life and redesign of solar panel and the lithium batteries, new materials and the new business and uh, smart manufacturing. The second, the Clean Tech Institute with $200 million for 10 years. Their focus are solar energy, low emission mining and lithium advanced materials. The last is the Technological Consortium for Electromobility with that $7 million for six years. For the, the next years, R&D National Agency will make uh, two calls for the technological startups to create uh, new companies in Chile with a grant around $300,000 for two years. The name is the Startup Science Program. Uh, I, I think that uh, she talked. Uh, we, we talked uh, in, in, the, in this case. Uh, finally, uh, we have um, a Startup Chile program to attract uh, entrepreneurship uh, to Chile. Francesca has a lot of knowledge for, for the program. In all initiatives uh, that I talked, there are many, many opportunities to explore, join uh, with international entities or companies. Um, my invitation is that you know these initiatives and to make new projects between companies or entities in Chile and Germany. We can send you more details through IECO for the people who have interest in. Definitely. Thanks a lot, Elizabeth. Uh, Dr. Pablo Catalan, I understand you also have a lot to say about the topic of how uh, at the UDEC you foster innovation in the eco related topics. Well, uh, first of all, uh, hola Gabriela, hola a todo el mundo en Chile, hello everybody in Germany. I'm really happy to be here with you to share some thoughts and comments about international collaboration. Um, I would say that in our case, Universidad de Concepción, international collaboration has been built through the years through different channels. Uh, from a historical point of view, and I'm talking maybe this is a little bit boring, but it's also, I think it's also interesting. From an historical point of view in our university, we've been very lucky to have different foreign faculties. Uh, the university was, was very wise, I think, I'm talking about 60 or 70 year, years ago, to hire German professors, Italian professors that make a great influence in our university, especially and not only about teaching, but also in terms of building uh, a very strong relationship with industry in Chile, talking about mining, talking about pulp on paper in different stages. And hiring them allowed us in, well, decades ago, as I said, to build a new capacity, an endogenous capacity here in, the, in, in Concepcion. And I would say that uh, because of those professors, uh, nowadays, I think it was the seed, if you want. Nowadays, we can talk that our university has a very strong position in terms of chemistry, in terms of, of uh, marine sciences, pulp and paper, and so on, mining also. After that, I think we, we jumped to another to a new stage in terms of uh, we were very lucky to have uh, our young professors doing their PhDs in Germany, in France, in England, in different countries, mostly European countries, I would say. And those young professors build their, their relationship with their advisors and start building their own research group here in Chile. 
and 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 nowadays uh, it's kind of a follow up with uh, what Elizabeth said nowadays i think international collaboration in chile is been built around uh, new research and development centers publicly funded in very strategic areas and one of them it's of course uh, or deal with different topics that uh, are related with uh, circular economy in our case here in the University of Concepcion, a very good example of international collaboration has been, and I think he's here, our, our director is here, Alex is here. It's been our unit of uh, our technological development unit. Uh, they've been very successful. Alex has been very, very successful in building a very strong relationship with different German R&D centers, universities, and, and faculties, researchers, I mean. And um, it's been because I think, uh, he has focus. I mean, he can speak for himself, but it's a very successful case because of his focus, because uh, he knows the culture of, of, of the partner, you know? And, um, and well, because each part know his role, its role, I'm sorry. And what we are trying to build right now at the, in the University of Concepcion, uh, regarding the topic that you asked, Gabriela, follows a very similar scheme. I mean, first, we have to choose a very strategic topic. Then, um, doing some, uh, I wouldn't say research, but being very clear that we have a strong local capacity within the university in, this, in the topic that we chose. I mean, our university is well known in Chile because of uh, our strength in chemical engineering, in mining engineering, in marine sciences, and in chemistry overall, especially. So we know that we are able or we are in a position to build very good international collaboration in those cases or in those topics. But I would say uh, you have two channels regarding your question. One is when you build those one-on-one -on -one relationship. I mean, researcher to researcher, which is, I would say, kind of the, the base or the fundamental pillar when you build international collaboration. And the other one is when, when you make those strategic decisions. Okay, as a university, I'm gonna invest or are gonna pick some very specific areas that are very well connected also, I would say, with national public policies. And I'm going to take advantage of my own international network. So it's a, it's a mix, I would say. Uh, uh, those one-on-one -on -one relationship, because the most important thing I, I think in terms of collaboration is people. And the other one, the big, uh, well-thought strategic decisions. Okay, thank you, Pablo. It's a great introduction also to get to know the UDEC a bit better. Um, I would like also now uh, to ask uh, Christos Klamouris from uh, Focus Energy. I I'm sure he has something to comment about how they foster energy topics at your, at your organization, right? Yeah, so good morning for you. Good morning, everybody, to, to my colleagues in Chile. I have to say first, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm really happy to exchange with you. Very I happy been, to have you too. I have been in Santiago seven years ago and uh, for some days and I had great uh, memories. So I think among the countries that I was in South America, that reminds me the most my own country, Greece. So I really felt very, very, very comfortable there. That was great time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm in charge for Axel, the energy, the energy accelerator here in Karlsruhe in Germany. And uh, our uh, organization has the name Focus Energy. So just in order to avoid any misunderstandings, we are a non-profit organization and we support uh, energy startups in the, in the pre-stage field on, or uh, the, the pre-establishment field. And this is the one part of what we support. And the other part is uh, through uh, several uh, camp events we try to bring uh, additional energy and startup impulses, so some motivation in order to create startups to students. Um, we have a very strong cooperation with the KIT. I also have a KIT background, and I also had the KIT spin-off. And in this context, uh, this is exactly what we do. So it works somehow bi -direc bi-directional. 
from the one side, there are many founders from the KIT. They get great support from the team of uh, Thomas, Thomas Neumann and uh, other institutes in order to um, get to know the basics about the uh, startup field. And as long as they have uh, an energy field that they want to, to bring to the market, then we can give them the energy expertise and the energy network behind that. But it works also the other way, namely we do have a cooperation with startups and the startups, they are looking for support. Mostly it's about the development of the one or the other product. And in this way, then we have an exchange with the KIT and there can be KIT institutes that they can support such a founders. Regarding international um, contest, context, it's uh, we can, uh, support also international startups and uh, especially for the business camps. So these uh, events specially made for students, uh, we have done, we did until now three times. So since 2018, uh, the energy business camp where then uh, students from all around the world, they have been invited here in Karlsruhe and then they have learned the uh, basics about energy and business. So that's my first introduction on that. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thanks a lot, Christos. And that means these uh, camps are also open for for the Chilean researchers or... Yeah, or else I wouldn't have said that. Yes, of course. Yes, great. Of I course, just wanted to make sure and compromise you. Of course, uh, uh, this year we did this uh, virtually and most probably next year will be the same, but definitely such an event can be open to, to Chilean students or to other partners, definitely. We'll be in touch about that. I'm going to mix up things a little and ask uh, another lady uh, from the panelists, uh, namely Francesca. I'm sure you can mention a lot about how ProChile fosters innovation in eco related topics, all of circular economy, uh, sustainable development, industrial development. If you can comment on that, please. Sure. Um, hola, Gabriela. And all, uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm just um, uh, assuming this uh, new role in uh, in Portile, and uh, I would um, just uh, let you know about uh, some different initiatives that uh, and programs that we have, and, and that we have a focus on supporting the businesses that develop sustainable solutions in order to, to take care of um, the global problems, as, such as you mentioned, like clean energy, uh, water efficiency, circular economy, right? So all of these solutions that can also be applied to uh, different industries and uh, like, I don't know, like mining and uh, agriculture, etc. cetera. So, um, and, and those uh, industries have uh, definitely a huge challenge today in terms of uh, becoming more sustainable uh, in both the short and, and long term. Um, today is the market who's also uh, demanding for more uh, sustainable business models and countries are increasing also their, their own um, regulation policies, right? So in that line, we have uh, the, our Go Global program that seeks to help Chilean businesses export their model by partnering with uh, local soft landing programs in different uh, countries. And so far we've helped uh, 80 different scale-ups from uh, which 23 declared to have this like triple impact, social, economical, and, and environmental, of course. And, and I wanted to tell you like a couple of examples that uh, we've, uh, we've had in our, in our program. Like one is uh, uh, it's called fresh water, that it's a device that captures uh, humidity from uh, air to transform it into water for uh, rural areas and, and communities. And another one could be like um, Instacrops, that what they do, it's a software and a IoT device that optimizes irrigation weather forecast, uh, detects pe uh, pests and diseases and maximize fertilizers and uh, give a real time uh, recommendation for farmers uh, and, and with uh, actionable uh, insights. So these are just two examples of the kind of businesses we supported and uh, that want them to scale and expand to, to the rest of the world. It sounds like a two great initiative, Francesca. I think uh, Pedro want to mention something, especially about circular economy. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor and pleasure for me to be here uh, and sharing with, with you. Uh, well, in, in relation to, to the circular economy, um, basically, uh, use LATAM uh, encourage innovation and technology transfer by, by supporting process that strengthen the cultural innovation in the cultural economy uh, and the circular economy in the in the specifically the the in the construction area is is very interesting we advise the mining construction tourism and wine industries different 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 uh, topics or, or area to application right um and in, in, in definitely uh, in, this, in the circular economy, um, see opportunity in, in a program to encourage collaboration and innovation. Um, I, um, Chile is currently developing its the most ambitious plan to transform the construction industry using the circular economy. Actually, uh, use LATAM uh, support this program and create uh, a different connection in, in the ecosystem, the industry. All the, all the different, uh, um, the government and the private sector, academy, create the, the relationships. It's very interesting in this, this point, right? Um, to, to transform the industry. Yes, I think it's a great uh, dialogue that you are coordinating from mm -hmm. Youth Latam in order to support the circular economy. Exactly, exactly. Um, in, 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 in my opinion, uh, and my expertise is create the, the inspirational narrative uh, to transform the culture. Um, and um, in, fact, for in this, in this uh, this line using the mass media uh, documentary series in television and 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 create the the transform the conversation in the science and create the art inspiration it's very it's very special for for this project um, right yes actually i'm glad that you mentioned that because that's a great uh, way to go into the next question. Namely, uh, many of the participants want to, want to know how to foster the development of innovative solutions from the academy or universities into the industry. And for this question, actually, I'd like to um, ask our Thomas and Thomas, maybe in this order, Thomas Mardones and then Thomas Neumann to mention how do they think they can, uh, or universities can foster these innovative solutions going from their researchers into the industry. Right, uh, thank you for the invitation and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, maybe there are many ways uh, I will share what we are doing, and what we think uh, makes sense. For, for this purpose. And we are very much pool driven. Uh, we are an organization that is very close to industry, to different industries. So our way of, of approaching is to understand the industrial requirements. And based on that, look for the best technologies that make sense for that challenge and work with, with that, um, with that uh, mixing of technology and industrial requiring. Um, and, and I think that that is critical because if you put the requirement first, you can help the researchers, even if they're doing um, basic research, they can understand where there could be an opportunity. Uh, so they, they, can, they don't work solving a problem that doesn't exist. Uh, and I think that's very important from the early stages. So I think this is one of, of our critical approaches. And the second is, uh, is trust. I think uh, there's a lot of work to do with uh, trusting every part, uh, understanding that they have different incentives. They have a, a researcher that maybe is not interested in moving to technology or a company that really has some financial uh, restraints and need to do this at a low cost. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's to understand, to trust, 
but uh, in our case, we see the, the innovation as adoption of the technologies. So when the companies need it, there's absolutely a higher willingness to invest. There's a higher willingness to uh, try the technologies. And, and in our case, uh, I can share that that is our approach. And we think we can foster innovation that way. Thank you, Tomas. Uh, Thomas, would you like also to comment on, on your perspective, how to foster this uh, yes. exchange? Yes, of course. So um, I'm the last in this round to say thank you for the invitation. Um, well, I think that uh, Thomas mentioned a few things because I think that once again, we have to accept that we live in a very complex and complicated world. Also, when it comes to cooperation and collaboration with the industry, with startups and the environment. So I think it's not only about research or tech development anymore. It's, it's more about bringing up cooperation, collaboration, and that it means that we have to build networks. And Thomas also mentioned trust. I think that when we talk to each other, when we accept that there are different target groups, and that means as a researcher or a university, the target group is uh, the industry, for example, they have a different understanding or maybe different requirements when it comes to innovation. And that, that means also that we have to discuss about uh, maybe project management or what is the process to, to work with each other and also to work with international partners. So um, in international means different cultures, for example, um, and also different times uh, to meet with each other. And I think that's, that's one thing we have to accept. So complex, complicated, but it's, it, it can be done. And um, also Tom, Thomas mentioned, I think sometimes we have to, to talk with our researchers uh, what is the goal of, of this project, for example, and what are the milestones? Because many researchers are, are focusing on the research, of course, but the industry wants, wants, yeah, wants at the end, want to uh, sell products. And then we have to, have to do milestones. We have to do a project management. And I think we are in a good way in tech transfer because uh, we, we talk to each other international. I really just discussed this and uh, I think the industry accepts that we work different. Okay, thank you, Thomas, for your perspective. Um, Christoph, uh, Christos, I'm sure you can also share, share from your perspective. How do you think we can foster the transfer of innovation and technology from the academy to the industry? Um, yeah, I, I think I can do that because I do have the experience on that. I know. Uh, Apart, apart from the points that uh, Thomas and Thomas they mentioned, I think it's also important uh, or that would be helpful to change also the culture of the professors themselves so that especially about researchers, they, they, can, uh, they shouldn't have as a main goal just papers, 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 but really then to try to make a kind of market research within its institute in cooperation with a specific um, with a specific uh, um, organization inside the university that can support them, it's really progress on that, and really then to find out what could be the potential applications of that. So I was very happy when I did my my startup at the beginning when I finished my master thesis. My professor told me, Christos, I don't think that the subject is about. Uh, making a PhD or making such a paper. What about having a startup? So we're talking now back in 2006. So that professor there that was really uh, very open-minded and uh, he was really in front of his time. And uh, that's why they, and I started that. And then I found out that there were really on that time, not so many doing that, even by exchanges with my colleagues, nobody was thinking about that. Some of them, they are not made to become businessmen. It's clear, but my experience says that I discovered in my, myself, I discovered that I had the potential to do that. I didn't know that before. And I had the support from my professor and from KIT in order to do that. And I think it's also crucial in order to, to help the researchers first to communicate their ideas in a, in a way that the business is going to understand that or the industry but additionally to help them through uh, different uh, measures, KIT or Germany do have such measures so that they can really, they can go uh, farther once or two steps farther 
and make a startup because they are going to get a lot of experience in many fields. And that I think it can be a key in order to achieve uh, more innovative solutions with that. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that usually the researchers, they have brilliant ideas, but they do not know how to communicate them. The most of them, they, are phys uh, they come from physics, chemistry, they have engineering background, but they do not know exactly how to present an idea so that at the end of the day, it can be attractive and, and interesting. And this is where Axel can help them or KIT or other parts. We have also joint projects. And this is exactly one of the main things that we are saying at the beginning, namely, yeah, tell me the research, but think always that the people behind you are not going to understand you. You need to find the language or the, the, uh, the, the main part so that everybody can understand what you do. And this is also a crucial thing in their mindset that they need to change. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot. I'm very glad that you mentioned the point of market research because that leads to the next question. When talking about the desire to develop into a more sustainable economy, our participants and myself as well, we are uh, curious about which markets or which topics are going to be the largest opportunities uh, or in which, which markets there is the largest need to innovate in Chile and in Germany. And I'm also glad you mentioned the point of communicating because I'd like to ask uh, Pedro from Latam, who are specialists in communicating and disseminating results to comment. Uh, this time I'm going to ask um, just keywords. What are the key markets in, you f in the future, Pedro, that you think that we'll need the most uh, or we have the most potential to develop for technology transfer and innovation? Just keywords, right. just so that make sure we come to the end of the questions today. Just looking right. at the time right now. Thank you for, for this question. Uh, well, the, the principal key, key learning uh, is it, um, listen to communities uh, and different problems uh, probably uh, is, um, and create uh, uh, inspirational stories about the problem and solutions. Uh, expand the possibilities in mass media and create the, the or, or incentivate a new conversation. Pollinization is very interesting and create relationship uh, and, um, and incentivate uh, a provoke question for, for the TV channel, for the media and create short communication. Short is very important, simple, short, video short, uh, text short. Uh, versus uh, academic uh, paper. It's very interesting, but never uh, people read complete the paper, but this, the video is only click, is direction to the heart and, and mind and, uh, and create um, uh, inspiration. This is the, the idea of history. In, in film and in, in, in documental series, create a, this aspect and uh, connect uh, different solutions. In Germany, for example, Norway and Sweden, uh, my team create a very interesting series, Desafio 2030, uh, support the United Nations, right? It's very interesting. And uh, expand the possibilities in Chile. Yeah? Create the best experience in these countries and the best experience in Chile the idea is not compare, the idea is inspiration uh, all, all the time. And, um, and the university and the private sector and, uh, and uh, the public sector uh, uh, create a space to communicate the best experience. This is the idea. This is the second key, key learning. The first is short communication. The second learning is uh, create a pollinization around the, the ecosystem and uh, and they create the good histories and uh, this is third great histories yeah. thank you uh, pedro elizabeth uh, i still see you there can you also comment uh, but now specifically in which market sectors or in which technology uh, fields do you see the largest chances or necessities for innovation yes sure um, in Chile, we have the largest opportunities uh, where technological innovators or innovators from Chile and Germany. 
could play a big role. The first is uh, Chile could be an electromobility natural lab because we have uh, copper, lithium reserve, and sun, good radiation. Uh, Chile leads in solar potential. And the second one is the circular economy, but around of the most important economic sector in Chile. We need to make green mining, so green mining. second is sustainable agriculture, and the sustainable forestry sector. All technologies, all projects around in these opportunities will have a, a good reception for the government and investment. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, maybe now, uh, uh, Francesca, uh, what can you say? Do you agree with, with Elizabeth's uh, potential markets for the future? Do you have something uh, additional so that our researchers can also maybe put their minds or try to think about that as a potential source of inspiration? Yeah, well, well um, I think one, one of the main aspects that must be taken into consideration when talking about a more sustainable economy is creating like an economical value, warranting the, this triple impact that we're uh, talking about, uh, like a balance between the community economy and the, and the envi uh, environment, right? So um, <clears throat> companies must be able to, to identify present and future risk and get ahead of the impact uh, that the business may, may have. Uh, in this line, circular economy, I think, is key to, to achieve this sustainable future. And we must assume that, that the current and the future scenario bring, uh, brings less uh, resources. And once again, it's urgent for the industry to add uh, new technologies and, and innovate, right? And, um, and as I mentioned earlier, I think one example of this may be the mining and the agricultural sectors that both Chile and Germany share. And uh, in terms of in terms of a uh, collaboration, sorry, I think there's a lot of space there for knowledge and and tech transfer and uh, construction capabilities. Great, great yeah, answer, you. Francesca. Um, what about uh, our German uh, panelists? What do you think, Thomas and Christos? What are the largest chances for the development of a circular economy in this international collaboration? Thomas, I let you this, uh, <laughs> mention that. <laughs> well, well, I, I think um, circular economy. Well, I think as as KIT, we we have defined seven global tech trends or research topics. And when we talk about circular economy, I think all these topics like energy, mobility, uh, of course, IT. IT is everything. I think, and climate and environment are topics we we are focusing on. And I think when we're going on to a lower level or a level lower, there are technologies like robotics and AI. We, we think that this will help us in the future, help the, the environment. And I think that's one part for collaboration or cooperation with the industry and also with uh, university partners uh, because we cannot do this alone. Uh, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, everyone has to help and everyone can participate. Thank you, Thomas. Would you like to add something, Christos? Where do you see the greatest chances or the greatest needs for technology mm. development? Yeah, here I have to say I do not have any, I don't see any priorities, any innovation in this field can be really very interesting. Uh, the only thing that may, may be avoided is the fact every year or every two years there uh, come a kind of, uh, a kind of uh, uh, hype so two years ago, it was blockchain. Now it's about hydrogen and so on. I think it's important that the universities or the institutes, they really try to get their market research. They really can see what is being asked for by the industry and then try to focus their activities on that. But I think every innovation that is be really supported and is really has a business background that can be really helpful for the whole economy. That's clear to me. I maybe totally maybe, maybe I can add one thing because uh, I also mentioned AI or I will have to mention AI because I think it's not only a technology, it's, it's a tool. And when we understand that it's a tool for every technology and every development, I think we should focus on that. We should 
bring researchers together, like AI researchers and, of course, in the energy fields and so on. AI can do a lot if we understand it as a tool and not a technology for it alone, because the technology it, it can do nothing. That, that sounds like future music, but I think it's actually currently going on already, just we don't notice yet. Mm, the next question from our participants is actually very focused on Chile. So I think next uh, our Chilean guest will be the ones to answer this question, namely, what are the strengths and weaknesses of Chile to develop an economy based on technology? And I'd like to start this uh, round with, uh, with Tomas Mardones. Well, that, that's a tough one. Um, uh, I think uh, there are some strengths, of course, uh, in terms of, of the scientific community and, and productivity, and also in the um, uh, stability of institutions so far. Uh, so, so that makes sense as, a, as an interesting place for uh, technology development. In the, the um, the things we can uh, develop, and, and I think it's, it's needed. Um, one is, is that uh, it's a very small market. Chile is, is really small market. Uh, so there's there's a, a structure structural um, requirement to be open to other countries immediately in all tech development. Um, but on the other hand, it's a good uh, place for trying technologies. And maybe there's a, a, an area we can we can explore. And the other one is something that that I don't know uh, for sure, but I, I can place the, the question: is who is doing the technology side? Because uh, there seems to be a very strong uh, scientific um, um, establishment and, and a lot of productivity in the universities, but uh, units that really do technology. Uh, like uh, Alex is there, I know uh, they are doing a great job in, in University of, of Concepcion, uh, but who is, is doing that? And I think there's an opportunity there that probably we will uh, address in the following years and understand the technical side. Sometimes it's not uh, only the science, but how to move to a more uh, a prototype, uh, some technology. And we had this year uh, an experience in, in our institution because of COVID, and we develop um, these, um, I don't know the name in English, respiradores artificiales. Uh, it's, it's for, for COVID treatment. And this was done in three, four months. And it was incredible. It's called Un Respiro para Chile, the, the program. And now they're exporting the, the so the, the capabilities are there. We did the same with diagnostic kits. And we have already three companies that in three or four months, uh, bring technology, uh, some developed technology, and now they are doing the testing locally, QPCR, etc. So um, maybe the, the point is there. We had a, a strong uh, pressure to do something, but it happened. So how can we do that? Not with the pressure of COVID, but uh, but move to the technology and seems to be uh, seems to be companies, seems to be universities, seems to be. Uh, some inventors that are doing very interesting things. And uh, the challenge is how to uh, get them together, uh, bring them the, what they need in terms of regulatory, uh, financial, and move on with these this, uh, developments in the technical side. OK, Thomas, thanks a lot. Um, I understand that uh, Pablo would like to say something else regarding the strengths and weaknesses of Chile to develop in an economy-based technology. I'd like just to mention, we are approaching the end of the hour. So if the answers could be from now on a little bit more uh, concise, would be great so that we can maybe have one more last round of questions before we have to finish. Okay, Gabriela, that's a big question. I mean, to answer, I would make a comparison between what have been entrepreneurship public policy in Chile and science and technology public policy in Chile. Chile has been very successful, in my opinion, in terms of entrepreneurship policy. I mean, if you check our numbers, I mean, especially regarding culture, the country has been doing very well during the last 25 years. And it's been, in my opinion, because our policymakers has been able to 
reach a social consensus in terms of the importance of entrepreneurship. So the discussion around entrepreneurship policy has been one, a very stable one. When we talk about science technology, I would say the situation is very different because you have ups and downs during the last 25 years. Some political coalitions push for certain kind of policies, then another coalition, a political coalition took over government and pushed for an, a different kind of policies. And the result of that is the lack of a social consensus and that we are moving from one approach to the other. And what we have today, it's a very low public and private investment in science and technology. So um, nowadays, I think we have, talking about science and technology and innovation, we have a very, as Thomas said, productive scientific community, which does very good work in terms of quality, international level work, but we don't have a very book, uh, very significant, I'm sorry, uh, technological endogenous capacity in Chile. And especially, I think we need more public funding. Public funding is low in Chile uh, regarding science and technology. And such level, such low level of public funding in science and technology, nowadays, I think it's a significant um, gap to build new or, or, or stronger science and technology capacity. As a, as if you come to Chile, you're gonna talk with several people and you're gonna see different discussions around human resources, around um, logistics, around infrastructure in science and technology. Even though, even though uh, once, uh, as Thomas said, once we found or, or we are able to found the right channels, you can see uh, very good um, or incredible projects uh, uh, going on in Chile. Thanks, Pablo, for that uh, answer. I think uh, looking at the time, I'd like just uh, to start a last round of uh, questions with all of the speakers, starting with, with Elizabeth, who uh, also needs to leave very soon, just um, regarding specifically startups. How can a startups participate in this, uh, so to say, a new wave of technology regarding circular economy? How can your organization foster uh, the participation of startups? Of, uh, we have a, a different programs, uh, but the important uh, say the, that is the of the pandemic. We learned the resilience and led us uh, about economy. It is for that the focus for next year from Corfo, in especially at the Ministry of Economy, are economic reactivation, entrepreneurship and the re-entrepreneurship, but with sustainable economic, environmental and the social, where circular economy or technology around that is very, very relevant. It will be many, many opportunities in, in this way. The other topics or technology is about uh, 5G, uh, the government will support SMEs to incorporate the 5G technology and he, its applications. Um, and the last topic is the development and application of artificial intelligence in different sectors. In this topic and technology in Chile will open opportunity to support new projects from the startups. Thanks a lot, Elizabeth, from that insight from Corfo. Um, maybe staying uh, in Chile and then coming back to Germany, uh, Francesca, may you, uh, can you please comment something about participation of startups? How, sure. do you, how to activate them, how to foster their participation? Yeah, well, I, I think um, COVID-19 has uh, accelerated the process that we were expecting to happen in like, five or 10 more years, right? And show us that the most, of, if not all of industries definitely needed to innovate. Um, and in that sense, I would say that um, 
even the way that we we used to work, like from office, having like presidential meetings, face-to-face -face, uh, networking events, etc., uh, also changed, and all of course changed uh, forever. Um, uh, wouldn't be we wouldn't be here if, if this wouldn't be like this, right? But so, we may uh, be in Chile. That would be yeah. no even better. <laughs> Ho hopefully, in a in a few more months. Um, so uh, from human resources to like to fintech, edtech, uh, of course, health tech, um, these industries will or we or, or um, already change the and the companies that are not innovative, sorry, innovating in the in their services or, or business model, of course, will definitely uh, die. And uh, and here, of course, startups have uh, the the main role um, due to uh, mainly to their capability to move fast, to adapt real quick to the market needs, uh, and they can also pivot much easier, of course, than at a big corporate. Um, and a lot of them have already shown that uh, they've taken advantage of the like. In a very good sense of the pandemic by uh, pivoting their services uh, to develop solutions for dealing with the virus. We have a lot of different examples of, of this. So um, I think that main actors uh, in the current situation are startups for sure. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask for the perspective of the Sofofa Center of Biotechnology. Tomás, how can startups participate? I fully agree with with Francesca. It, it's a it's a it's time more a requirement um, because of new technologies. Because of big companies are not that fast. Um, because also globalization. Sometimes we have seen startups that have people from Chile, from Germany, from US. So I think it's it's a, a probably a market trend, and uh, and the challenge is how to to foster this. Uh, this ecosystem for, for startups to not only to, to start, but uh, not just stay a startup and grow in, in some time. To start and continue then. Yeah. Of course. And I'm sure now that Thomas Neumann from Kaite has a lot to say about how to kick it off with the startups. Yeah, of course. So first of all, I think I can agree to all as Elizabeth, Francesca and Thomas said, and I think I can add that I think startups are participating right now. Um, they are working on new technologies. And of course, uh, it's not that you work against an industry or an industry partner. I think also the, the big industry partners, the big companies are looking to, to work with startups right now, because as you mentioned, or Thomas mentioned, uh, they are not that fast, but they need new technologies. They need new ideas. And that's that's the time of the startup. Like a speedboat, everyone sa says uh, startup is a speedboat. Um, yeah, they are, they are looking to, to find new ways to work with startups also internationally. So I think when, for example, mobility uh, companies like Daimler, Mercedes-Benz, uh, they are not only working with German startups, they are looking worldwide. To, to work with them. Sounds very encouraging. And um, Christos, would you like to add from your perspective? Uh, I think you mentioned that a couple of times, I might guess uh, what your comment would be, but how can you uh, wrap up the, the, the conversation about how can startups participate more? Uh, you mean participate more in our program or what? Uh, no, uh, regarding the topics that will become econom economically important in the future. How can we uh, foster that more startups get involved into maybe in regarding what you said, not only some products that will not have maybe a market, but how to encourage startups which will actually provide solutions for the industry? Yeah, so definitely the first part would be definitely to conduct the, the local uh, the local offices. So at KIT, there is a strong one, I suppose, or from what I hear is also in other universities in Chile. Many. They, are, they yes. can, uh, they can um, get networked or they can get some first advice on how they are going to proceed with their own uh, startup idea. And then definitely it's important to know what the industry wants. So definitely that uh, they make their market research, they can uh, find out, is it really what I want to bring to the market? Is it really needed? 
also to be critical to themselves, which is not always easy because each startup founder is biased with his own idea. He believes that his idea is the best in the world, but uh, uh, after some time, the, the market reality come to hit him in the, in the, in the face. So it's really important to, to get such an experience as fast as possible. We can support such, a, such, a, um, such a, an activity here, KIT can do that. So it's definitely very important to know my environment, to know that I'm not going towards an, an exotic idea or towards something that it doesn't make any sense, but really to get some advice, to have my ears always open to what my advisors, they told me, even if this can be against my own uh, thoughts. It's important always to get, to listen to what the uh, experts and industry says. Thanks a lot, Christos. Uh, uh, maybe, Gabriela, sure. maybe, uh, when it comes to startups, so I'm, I'm burning for startups, as you see in my back, so um, I can make an <laughs> offer to you uh, in, now in I Chile. Get it. Uh, yeah, uh, I can make an offer to you in Chile because um, as part of the KIT Gründer Schmiede or the Founders Forge, we are working on a program right now. It's called the, the Global Horizon Program. So we want to invite uh, startups coming from, from other countries uh, to, to, to yeah, have a look at the European market, to develop new ideas in, in cooperation, collaboration with our accelerators, for example, Axel, and that they have a second home in, in Europe and uh, that's that's one of our new programs and also there are a lot of other programs and if you want to you can contact me uh, we can have a discussion or just just contact me on LinkedIn um, that's my my yeah, my uh, the best uh, yeah the best uh, communication tool so feel free to, to contact us we are we are open for cooperation thanks a lot Thomas um, it's uh, five minutes past. Uh, three in Germany, five minutes past uh, 11 in, in Chile. Um, there is uh, one question in the chat. If the panelists still have five more minutes, I can read it loud. Uh, and if any of you have to leave, I'm really happy that you were here. And I, I say goodbye to those who need to leave. For those who can stay, I see one question uh, from uh, Mrs. Richter from the German Embassy. She asked, how do you think we can best make German-Chilean cooperation visible? Uh, she mentions there is, they are always happy from the embassy to promote initiatives on the social media and print and mentions a couple of the channels. So how do you think we can make this cooperation Chairman Gili more visible? And I think uh, this question might be open also to any of the other participants. Maybe one simple idea. So everyone in this group uh, has to do a LinkedIn post uh, because uh, it's all about social media at the moment. So uh, would be I, I will make a, a social media post, I think uh, in yeah, maybe five minutes. Great, and I'm gonna like it, yeah. kudos. Yes, you have to share it. Good idea. Uh, what other ideas can we share? Of course, we're going to publish in the ECHO website uh, the event next week. We're going to make a social note. Uh, so far, I know uh, Thomas, Andrea already contacted me. We're going to do that as well together, some um, press uh, release. What other ideas do you have, dear participants and dear panelists? If I maybe can say a word myself. Um, because I see there's so much happening and so much going on, but maybe everybody does their own project and it's not very visible as German-Chilean cooperation. So maybe we could think about using some common hashtag if, as Herr Neumann said, as social media is currently the, the way to go and inshallah next year it's going to be more <laughs> yes. different again. Um, we are currently using uh, Sjensmania and um, Alemania in Sele, but if you have ideas, always feel free to um, contact me or write us on social media and we'd be very happy to share your content as well. Uh, uh, if I might ask something myself as well, to be honest, I'm not the youngest of the participants, but I'm also not the oldest. And what I heard from uh, some of the researchers from the senior ligas is that they do not really follow social media. Uh, they, don't, they do not have Instagram accounts. They do not have a LinkedIn account. They do not have a, a, a Twitter. Um, I think we should also think about other ways of making it visible because it's true. Not everybody has these uh, social media accounts. 
I mean, we can always use print press as well. If you have something you want to publish and you can publish it yourself, great. If you want us to assist you, also just contact us. Yeah, and so traditional have, channel plus the new if, wave. If you, if you have other ideas how to promote it, please talk to me. I'd be so happy. Thanks a lot. Is the, let me see if there is more questions in the chat. Um, yeah, maybe I'll... Gabriela, maybe it's it sounds funny, but in the end, you 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 need Yeko T-shirts. We have uh, them. We okay. have them. Next so time we will use them. Everyone needs a Yeko T-shirt uh, to to support this this program. Yes. Next time we are in Chile, get ready. Everyone will have one, and in Germany as well. So I think uh, I don't see any more questions from the chat and uh, in, in respect to the time of all of the participants and of the and of the panelists might be the time to say goodbye. Andreas, if you would like to jump in here, our project director might want to say some words. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, Danny is currently showing the Yeko t-shirt. It exists, yeah. It's yes, ah, thank you, Danny. In large numbers. <laughs> going to produce more of them well thank you so much this has been really impressive and really informative and it was really great to see the expertise of the panelists i'm impressed about the topic of, of innovation management which is new to me i'd also be one of the professors that christoph christos mentioned that usually try to publish papers but don't come up with the idea to create a startup so but i learned a lot today and I'm, I'm really happy for, for the support of all of you, also from the AAD and the German Embassy. It's, it's great to have um, yeah, support from the political side, so to speak, as well. And of course, thank you so much to all the panelists. Um, and we'll, we'll stay in touch. Yeah, I mean, the contribution you made is, is really important to us. This is the end of the ECHO days. I'm quite happy about that format. I talked with the team today, yeah, it was combining the internal team meeting on day one and combining and having a science meeting on day two and now having that innovation meeting and we're gonna um i think we're gonna come up with with a second uh, with a second version of the echo days so thank you very much this is the official end <laughs> and and i really hope to see you soon yes uh, thanks a lot everyone and uh, follow us in our social media channel soon we'll have one as well Yes. Bye bye. 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 Goodbye. Have a nice morning. Have a nice afternoon. And have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. See you.